Now those of you who have been watching this channel for a little while will know that my true passion lies in through hiking long distance trails at the moment just here in New Zealand but hopefully later on around the world too. But when I'm not out on those trails you can often find me out and about around the country just enjoying some of our beautiful day hikes that we have here in New Zealand. And so in this video I wanted to show you exactly what I pack into my day pack to help keep me as safe as possible when I'm out on a shorter hike. Now before we go any further don't forget that my number one goal at the moment is to through hike the South Island portion of Te Araroa in this upcoming hiking season and one of the best ways that you guys can help me with that is just by simply clicking the subscribe button below this video. Once you've done that if you'd like to help me out in a different way then you can go and check me out on Patreon I'll put the link just up here and also in the description down below. For as little as one US dollar per month you can become one of my exclusive patrons getting access to photos and videos from my preparation as I head towards the South Island next year as well as exclusive content photos and posts directly from the trail and if you're somebody who is planning on through hiking something like Te Araroa in the future you might benefit from being on one of my monthly live Q&A sessions or else participating in a live Q&A session directly from the South Island next year those of you who have been hanging around this channel for a little while will know that my day pack of choice is the Osprey Daylight Plus 20 litre pack. And you might think that a 20 litre pack is maybe a little on the small side for a day hike, especially when you're getting up to the 20 or 30 kilometre day hikes that I was just talking about. But in actual fact, this particular backpack has performed exceptionally well since I first purchased it. And that is kind of surprising considering I originally bought it just as a normal backpack or rucksack to use when I was biking to and from work. Now before we open it up to see exactly what is inside, don't forget that I am showing you what I think are the absolute basics that you need to be carrying on any day hike in New Zealand to keep you safe in the outdoors. All right, so here is the pack and I'm gonna be running through with you exactly what I have packed and where in this pack. But if you are interested in finding out any more about the actual pack itself, I will link for you a video that I made a number of years ago, one of the first videos on this channel covering all the specifications of this pack that'll be linked just over here somewhere. I will also be doing another newer and much more in-depth version of a review of this pack in the coming weeks and months so make sure that you stay tuned for that. So let's start with the things that I carry in the outside pockets on this pack. Now you will notice it does have two um, mesh side pockets here which you could use for carrying water. I found that they're not quite deep enough to carry any water in so more often than not I'll be storing things like tissues or maybe even my car keys in these side pockets or they just don't get used at all. So the very first place I start storing things is in this front zip pocket here, which I find incredibly handy, and I can reach around to grab things out of this when I'm hiking as well. And the first thing that comes out is my lip balm. Now, lip balm in New Zealand is an essential item when we have the sun as strong as it is here, and also the wind in some of the exposed areas that I hike in. It's always good to keep a little thing of lip balm just to keep those lips nice and moist so that they don't crack up. After the lip balm, the next thing I'm going to pull out of here is my cell phone. And of course, it is important to keep some kind of a device with you when you're out hiking, just in case you get into trouble. Also, to let your friends and family know when you're starting and when you get back, just so that they can keep an eye on you to make sure that you're hitting the times that hopefully you have left for them before you leave. Of course, there are some areas in New Zealand that don't have cell reception either. So a little later on in this video, I'll show you what I do to combat that particular scenario. But also your cell phone can be used for things like maps and navigation as well if you have it all loaded up for that. That's the front pocket. The Osprey Daylight Plus also has this lovely little pouch just down in front of that front pocket and at the moment all I have stored in there is my face mask and of course we all know why we are carrying those things at the moment. And then I also have the zip pocket right at the top here. And this is where I tend to keep the things that I need to make sure are safe, um, the things that I need to get access to very quickly. But maybe not until later on in the day and that's things like my wallet with my ID and my cards and things just in case I need those and then I'm also keeping my car keys in this pocket as well they're not in here today but that's where I would normally keep them that's everything for the front pockets on this bag so let's move into the main interior pocket and in here is where all the goods get stored and it is just one big compartment system in here so I don't tend to split things up too much I just try and pack everything in 
as sensibly as I can so I'm trying to make sure that all the heavier items are right up close to my back and then if I am carrying more than one bottle of water for example that I have one bottle on each side of the pack on the inside just to keep it nice and well balanced so I tend to carry water just in something like a pump bottle or I might even carry water in a vacuum flask if I'm not going too far for that day and especially if it is a hot day I like to use my vacuum flask because it keeps my water nice and cold which is really good but usually I'm just using a single pump bottle and I'm just chucking that down either right in the middle of my pack or to one side after my pump bottle the next thing I'm going to pull out is my favorite or one of my favorite pieces of hiking gear and that is my Thermarest Z seat basically this is just a lovely insulated pad that I can put down onto the floor to sit down on when I'm taking breaks and if I'm just going for a very short day hike and it's not one that I'm going to be out for hours and hours and hours on then I probably will just leave this at home but it weighs basically nothing it doesn't take up too much space in my pack and it's just nice to have something to sit down on especially if I'm planning on taking a longer lunch break while I'm out there the next thing that I'm going to pull out is very important as well and it's something that not a lot of people think about on day hikes and that is my toilet paper and my trowel now a lot of you who've been watching my TA through hikes here will know that I carry with me a juice of spades trowel this is for digging cat holes in case I need to go number two while I'm out in the woods I just carry a little bit of toilet paper with me as well in case I get really caught out nine times out of ten I don't need to use this but I have been on the brink of being caught out before and it's not a nice experience so now I just take it with me wherever I go anyway just in case and I have to say it doesn't weigh very much again it doesn't take up too much room in my pack and if I really wanted to I could stick it in that outside front pocket there but it's always good to know that I have it just as a backup safety measure sorry I'm having to move around a lot today because the weather is raining on and off anyway the next thing that I want to cover off in my bag here is my sun protection so as I've mentioned plenty of times before on this channel our sun here in New Zealand is incredibly strong I found that out directly for myself a couple of years ago when I was hiking the Tama Lakes track just over the new year period and I came back with some of the worst sunburn I've ever had on my legs so I always try to carry with me a tube or just a little bottle of sunscreen just to keep me a little bit more protected now it's just not worth it your skin is the largest organ in your body so always carry sunscreen with you even if it's a cloudy day because those UV rays can still get through and then after sunscreen of course you should always be carrying some kind of a hat with you even if you're not always wearing it you'll know that I prefer to use some kind of a wide brimmed hat just to give me a little bit more protection from the sun but I have also used just normal peaked caps as well and they work just as well too. And another important piece of gear for the kit is of course a pair of sunglasses and this is to keep your eyes protected from the harsh effects of the sun. Again if I'm not actually wearing these they are usually just sitting in my pack somewhere so that I know where I can get to them. And while we're talking about protection from the sun we should also factor in protection from bad weather as well and so in my day hiking kit regardless of whether it is a beautiful bright blue sunny day outside I am always packing out with me my waterproof gear so this is my pair of waterproof pants very lightweight very small and then also my uh, Mac Pack Traverse rain jacket which is my rain jacket of choice at the moment that has a 20,000 millimeter hydrostatic head rating and I know that it's going to keep me as dry as I can be kept if I get caught out in a rainstorm so very important to carry these regardless of what the weather is like outside plus they act as great wind protection so if you get caught out on a ridge even in the middle of summer but with very cold and strong winds blowing I know that I can put this on and just have an added layer of wind protection as well now for me obviously as well I am out videoing a lot of these hikes for you guys so one of the things that I am carrying with me is a spare little mini tripod uh, either this one or something like a Joby gorilla pod and then also just another little miscellaneous thing which goes hand in hand with the lip balm and that is my little tube of Vaseline hand cream and that's just because I get very dry skin when I'm out hiking all that exposure to the sun and the wind just tends to dry out my skin so I carry a little bit of moisturizer with me to moisturize along the way now anybody who is hiking in the outdoors should always have at the ready and ready to go what I call my little survival kit 
I keep my survival kit just in one of these Sea to Summit dry bags, but you can keep it in anything, even just a Ziploc plastic bag. So as I mentioned, this is an emergency kit. So the reasoning behind everything that is in there is that this will hopefully keep me alive if I am caught out in the outdoors. So if I'm out on a long day hike and I misjudge something or I get lost or I end up having to spend a night out in the outdoors. So the first thing that comes out of here is my Soya Squeeze water filter. Now, you know, I've already said that I'm carrying with me some kind of bottled water regardless, but at the end of the day, if I'm out there for longer than I need to be, I am probably going to run out of that water. And yes, okay, I could probably drink the water that I find along the way and not have to worry too much. At the end of the day, if it's between life and death, I'm going to drink the water regardless, even if it gives me an awful stomach bug. But of course, if it does give me a stomach bug, then that is going to lead to further dehydration. So, it's just easier to carry with you some kind of water treatment and the soya squeeze is so small and so light that it makes it very easy to put in something like a, a survival kit like this. Second thing that I am going to pull out is something you should carry with you and that is an emergency shelter of some kind. Now I have two different kinds to show you here and uh, they're both pretty similar but you can just pick up a standard foil bag or foil blanket for about $2 from a $2 shop. These are easy to come across and uh, sold in most New Zealand outdoor stores. Very small, very compact, very light and easy to just throw into your survival um, kit. Also I have here a sole survival blanket so this will actually do two people which is really handy. This blanket will probably do two as well but I've never really had it out enough to check. Um, but this one here is specific for survival. Again, very small, very light. It compacts down nicely and just fits straight into my bag here. But at least I know that that is some kind of shelter to keep me warm if I end up caught out in the New Zealand backcountry. After that, probably one of the most important things you should carry with you if you are on a day hike and one of the most forgotten things on day hikes is a headlamp and you might think well I'm going out on a day hike I'm not going to need a headlamp. No, in the normal course of things you're not going to need a headlamp on a day hike. But again, if you get caught out on the trail, if you get lost somewhere and it ends up taking you another four or five hours longer than you thought it was going to, chances are you're then going to have to be worrying about the fading light. And so it's always good to have with you a headlamp just in case you get into a low light situation and you have to navigate yourself out. Now of course, not only is it helpful for trying to get back to the car if you end up hiking back in those low light conditions, but if you do end up having to spend a night in the outdoors, it's going to help you find a good place that you can bed down for the night somewhere with some nice shelter that's not in a flood area for example plus it's also going to act as a signaling device to any emergency services that might be out looking for you and the final thing that is here in my emergency bag is my first aid um, kit which is just the kit that I use on any through hike it has all of your basic things in there including my own personal medication so things like ibuprofen and paracetamol painkillers um, I also have in there some antiseptic cream in case I get a large cut including plasters, just small plasters and then some larger ones for larger cuts. Sometimes I will carry with me some skin glue because that's just a tiny little packet and it doesn't weigh very much. I also have some anti-inflammatory cream, a very cute little Bear Grylls survival guide that I got with my Gerber knife. And then the major other thing that I carry with me is also electrolyte sachets. And again, if I end up caught out in a survival situation, I want to make sure that above all else, I am keeping hydrated and those electrolyte sachets will help me to do that. In my little bag here is something that not everybody is gonna need to take with them, but I also carry my battery pack with me. So this is an Anker 20,100 100 milliamp hour charger it comes with me again just in case on the off chance I'm out there for longer than I should be because I've gotten lost or something and I'm running out of juice on my phone and of course my phone is my main form of communication so I want to make sure that I am always going to be able to charge that up and give somebody a call if I need to if I'm in cell phone coverage if I am not in cell phone coverage then I rely on my other favorite piece of hiking gear and that is my Garmin GPS map 66i. Now I will either take this with me or if 
it's not currently on a subscription plan because I don't always pay for the subscription over the winter months I will substitute this for some kind of a PLB a personal locator beacon and I usually hire the PLB from a local charity here in my town they charge me about $10 to hire it out for a day or a weekend uh, so it's a really affordable way of making sure that I am carrying something with me for my own personal safety sorry I just had to move slightly because I was getting wet um, but I just wanted to mention the last thing that I have packed into my day pack and again regardless of whether it is a beautiful hot sunny day outside or not and that is of course my puffy jacket and it's really important to take something like an insulated or thermal layer with you even if like I said it is a bright sunny day and you just don't think you're going to need it because the temperature can drop substantially overnight and so if you do end up getting caught out in the middle of the backcountry even on just a day hiking trail you want to make sure that you've got something nice and warm that you can wrap up in overnight of course if you're hiking during the winter months then you're probably going to want to take a couple of thermal layers with you as well just to make sure that you have got enough insulation around you when those temperatures do drop overnight and you might even want to take a more substantial shelter with you as well to be honest if i'm going on longer day hikes during the winter months then probably what i'm going to do is take my z packs are cool with me and actually just take my tent as well because it weighs basically nothing i can compress that pack right the way down and i can put a little bit more stuff in it just to make sure that i am prepared in case everything goes wrong Okay, so that is everything that I carry with me on a normal day hike here in New Zealand. I wanted to make this video because living here in the central North Island, right on the doorstep to the Tongariro Alpine Crossing, we see a lot of people every year having to be pulled off of the mountain because they haven't been prepared for the New Zealand outdoors. And by just preparing yourself properly, by using things like this video and then also the Department of Conservation resources for some of our tracks here in this country, you can make sure that you are as prepared as you can be before you head out on these trails and I just want to do my bit to make sure that people are safe and prepared when they are out in the outdoors okay guys that is it from me for this video I hope it's been helpful for you if you're more experienced and you think that I've missed something from this video then please go ahead and leave me a comment down below and help another hiker out otherwise please make sure that you go ahead and hit that like button don't forget to subscribe to my channel and ding that little notification bell in next week's video I am going to be covering off everything that you need to know about hygiene while you're out on a long distance hike like Te Araroa, so make sure that you stay tuned right here for that. Until then guys, take care and stay safe out there. Mm -hmm.